Hey everyone, it's Jeannie and today I'm featuring this Christmas card. Yes, Christmas. I know it's September, but it's also Stamptember, which is a month-long event hosted by Simon Says Stamp. Today's set features Warm Wishes, which is a collaboration with Honeybee Stamps, and I thought it was perfect for a holiday card. And if you want to see a non-holiday card using this very same stamp set, stop by my Instagram where I have a short reel of a second card. So if you didn't know, almost every day in September, Simon Says Stamp will release a limited edition stamp set which is a collaboration with a stamp company. If you like it, you should snap it up right away because once it's gone, it's gone. And as a fair warning, some sell out pretty quickly. It's kind of annoying because there's no discount. You can't combine orders throughout the month. So you do have to pay shipping every day. I tend to wait for something that I really can't live without to purchase and hope that other sets are still available. But sometimes that doesn't work out and you kind of live in a bit of regret. If you like it, you should definitely snap it up. And if not, you can live in regret or be happy with your choice. So I think it's kind of as Sophie's choice. In the end, they're stamp sets and you probably can find something similar. For today's card, I wanted to create a scene card. I had to do a bit of masking. So what I wanted was this sled holding the presents at the bottom of the card. And then I also wanted a snowman and a bunch of trees. So before you saw me lay out all the various pieces and that's kind of just determining like what I'm going to stamp and mask out first. So with masking, you want all the items that you want in front, like the presents and the snowman, to be stamped first. And then I move on to the snowbanks. And there's only one snowbank in this stamp set. And I actually thought that it was going to line up a little differently. And it just happened to line up the same, which is fine. It's not a big deal. I kind of wanted it shifted a bit, which it is, but it kind of looks like it's basically the same. Then I move on to the trees, which I'll stamp out. And I'll stamp out as many items as I can. And I'm also laying out my sentiment because sometimes I forget about the sentiment and I don't have enough space for it. But luckily here, I remembered it. So I spaced it out to make sure that the trees won't be stamped where I want the sentiment because most likely I will be heat embossing it since I'm going to ink up the sky. So I did a bit of masking for the trees as well because there is a little bit of overlap and I masked off all the items that I wanted because I am ink blending this entire background panel. First, I'm doing the snow banks, which I cut out the top portion of the snow bank with a mask and I will be ink blending with shaded lilac, which is a perfect color for snow because the sky kind of reflects onto the snow and it kind of picks up the same colors and I plan to use a purple bluish and the shaded lilac kind of looks purple blue, more purple for sure, but it kind of looks a lot lighter once you ink up the background because it's so dark. So you're kind of relying on the colors that are nearby as well. So I'm going to be ink blending the shaded lilac and then I will move on to the sky. I'll remove the mask and then I will add the other mask to cover up the snow bank and it was only a small piece so I took a piece of additional masking tape and I just put it at the bottom to give myself more space to be able to ink blend. I go in with my lightest color first and I think that I am blending on Nina Solar Crest 80 pound cardstock, which I don't find to be the easiest to blend on. If you want to find success blending on Nina Solar Crest paper, you kind of have to really saturate the paper. So I will go over it in, I think, a couple of times just to make sure that the colors are all blended. And you can see that as I get to the darker colors, you can see the choppiness of it and that will go away. So don't worry. And then also I'm going to be stamping on top of it as well as adding a bit of white gel pen everywhere. It kind of helps with skies, but if you want a really blended sky with no snow or rain or splatter, then you just keep going and ink blending over the colors multiple times until you get the blending that you want. That's really the trick of it. Otherwise, I would recommend using Bristol Smooth cardstock because it's just super smooth. It kind of has this like waxy finish on the paper, so your blending is a lot easier. You don't need to blend over and over as much. I also recommend the Hammer Mill cardstock, which is also pretty smooth and it's pretty easy to blend on. Once I finish ink blending, I move on to the Copic coloring and I won't be doing anything special. So I'll be coloring 
the snowman, the trees, the present, and the sled. As usual, I am using Copic markers, usually three for each color. I have the darkest that I put down where all the shadows are, and then I will blend out with the medium tone color, and then with the lightest color. So with the grays, it's kind of tricky to do white, but you want to leave a large portion of your image white without any color for it to look white. And I do go in with some grays and that's just to create some shadow. And as you build up the colors around your scene, the snowman will look white. I like grounding my images. I think it just makes it look like it's not floating in the air. It's something that I tend to do with all my images. Then I will be going in with red because since this is a holiday card, I tend to stick with red and greens and red just pops a little bit more for me. So I decided to color the snowman scarf and a little part of his hat red as well as a sled and a present. I tend to try to use the same colors throughout a card to make it look cohesive and along with red I thought gold would look good so I went in with a bit of gold and yellow is so tricky for coloring so my combination that I usually use to get a gold color is E99, YR24, Y08, and Y02 and it works really well. Then I'm going to go in with some greens just to color up the presents. And I think that this was really a good color combination. I also add in some blue because it matches the sky. I am really happy with all the coloring. And this is something you can do where you stamp everything out, put on some TV, and just do a bit of mindless coloring because it's kind of like a coloring book. Every time I do a scene card, when I stamp it out, it just feels like I'm coloring a page from a coloring book. I've thought about where I will stamp out a bunch of images into a scene and then I'll just put them away and whenever I kind of am in a creative slump I can pull it out and just take one of those scenes and color it and then make it into a coloring book which I think would be kind of cool. Once I finish coloring there is this stamp that is in the set and it is kind of like falling snow which is really cool and I decided to stamp it with white pigment ink and I will be adding white puff embossing powder to it. So technically the embossing powder is supposed to puff up and give it a bit of texture so it looks like snow and it does. It just wasn't as puffy as I had imagined. Previous holiday cards I've done with um, the snow marker and that really puffs up. I went ahead and stamped and heat embossed my sentiment. I went with silver because I wanted to wanted it to stand out among the sky and then I thought it was a little weird without the snow throughout the sky background so I took a gel pen and I'm just dotting all over so it looks like snow and it looks a little bit more cohesive instead of just the snow falling and kind of dissipating which I guess could happen because if the temperature isn't cold enough then the snow won't make it to the ground. I went ahead and pulled out my precision glue and I am covering up the entire areas on top of the tree because it already kind of has like a little snow bank on top and then there is going to be a little bit more of this glue because I decided to pull out my distress mica flakes which are these like white pearlescent flakes. I don't know. They're kind of transparent too. I don't really know how to describe it, but I thought it was going to be a cool accent to my card. So what I did was kind of pinched a little bit and just lightly tapped on the area where I added glue, making sure I got the areas covered. And then I kind of pushed some here and there just to make sure that it doesn't look weird and it fits within the stamped areas. And you definitely don't have to do that. You can just leave it alone if that's what you like. But I thought it was a little weird for snowflakes being that large to go outside the stamped images. So I just had to push it in. And then I decided to add glue on the top of the snow banks to do the same thing. And it's just kind of a cool technique. It's a cool accent to a card. It makes it a little bit more special. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing and I just have a scrap piece of paper so I can catch all these flakes so I can put them back into its little container. Once I add the flakes to the snow, this card is done. Remember, if you're interested in this stamp set, head over to Simon Says Stamp and pick it up. Once it sells out, it will be gone. So I hope you enjoyed this card and I will see you guys next time with another video. Bye!